buckle up because it's gonna be a long ride it's gonna be a wild ride nobody cares but we're gonna tell you anyways this is popcorn chats <laughs> what's up everyone welcome back to popcorn chats i'm mckay and i'm katie and this week we are back with a brand new netflix show from an amazing author short story program creator v schwab we love to see it sapphic romance for pride month first kill on netflix. hell yeah we binged the whole first season for this episode and we're gonna be breaking it down yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. A lot of familiar faces in this episode. Well, not a lot of familiar faces. I guess one. But I was dead ass convinced that Eleanor was from something. And then I looked her up and I couldn't like figure out a single thing that she was in that I would have seen. But I'm like, you look so familiar. Did you yeah, ever have Cor that same thing? Um, I didn't, but Corinne said that she had that same thing and she said that she looks like someone from the Vampire Diaries, I think. Oh, I never watched that. Yeah, I didn't either. I think it, that was what she thought it was from. I can't remember. She she had the same thing with Eleanor's character. The mom is fucking Mrs. Claus, which I thought that she was the actress who plays Sabrina's mom. Or wait, Serena's mom in Gossip Girl. Mm. But no, it's Mrs. Claus from The Santa Claus 2. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's funny that that's how you associate her because I associate her because she was Juliet on Lost and that was like my childhood favorite show. So as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh, Juliet's here. So oh, that's love her. Awesome. I love that actress. I think she's awesome. Yeah, Amazing. I'm excited to dive in, hear your Me thoughts. Too. But first, we must check in. Check Katie, in. how's LA? How's life? Um, LA is good it's hot i'm literally sweating all the time but it's fine walking dogs i'm doing that thing where this always fucking happens to me but i get like a ton of job interviews and like leads for like my dream jobs all at the same time so then i have like multiple interviews within a week so i just had a second interview today and i have a third interview for that same job tomorrow and then yay just like all the stuff, I got an email today about like a job that I really, really want. So I'm just like, it happens to me literally every time. It's like all at once and then I end up not getting any of them or like getting offered the ones that I like didn't want and then I like turn those down because whatever, but it's happening again. So I'm in yeah. that season right now. We'll see what fucking happens. I'm just rolling with the punches. I don't know. I mean, right now I'm so broke and my money situation is so fucking stressful but my mental health has never been better and I get to watch my favorite puppy the next two days and his name is Cooper and I get to watch him from nine to five yeah Wednesday and Thursday and so I'm so fucking excited for that to have him with me all day and that's days. nice because you can like take your laptop probably and like get just shit done while you're over there and everything yeah, yeah I actually just bring him here now oh nice because his, his mom works really close by, um, so it's just easier to have him here so then I can like be at my desk all day and then we just go for walks and I just have him on my lap all day and we we just hang I'm very bonded and connected to him now so I'm so scared that like someday his mom's just not gonna text me anymore to like watch him <laughs> and uh, but she texts me every week still so that's good but that's like, awesome ah, I like love have so much love for this dog now so I'm just like you can't keep me away from him now. that's so cute that's yeah. A lucky doggy. I got a really good review too on WAG. I'm I'm obsessed with WAG. I don't know. I love it so much, but I got a really good review. I'm a five star dog walker. High yeah. highly requested. So I'm moving up in the WAG world. But I've been walking these two these two girl um, sister puppies. They're not puppies. They're huge. I've been walking them together, and they're very high energy. But I take them on hour long walks, and they hurt the owner left me a really good review saying that they come back super happy and really tired and they were super excited to see me like the second time I came to walk them. So I don't know. My dog walking business, I'm very um fulfilled. <laughs> Good. Dude, that's such like an LA thing though, to like move from the Midwest out there and then like become a dog walk or like, you know, just something <laughs> like that. Oh well I I'm know. glad you're enjoying it. That is like kind of perfect for you. I mean obviously like not like dream job but kind of like dream job job material and just 
good for your mental health to be able to play with puppies all day. Right. It would be a dream job if I could make like a sustainable income on it, but it's perfect for me for right now. So yeah. How yeah. are you? What's going on in your life? Good. Um, I just got back from the vet with the kitties because they needed their rabies shot and they needed mm-hmm. a kitten distemper shot. And then they have to go back in another three weeks for that booster. It was wow. very stressful. I finally got to go in our vet clinic has still not been allowing people inside with their pets. Like I've never gotten to go into the vet with the kitties before because of COVID. But at this point, they like just opened this week for people to go in and even and then I had to like say that Aria was a sick pet because I wanted to talk to the doctor about her heart murmur because I've never really like gotten to talk to a vet about that. And I'm right. obviously highly concerned about them at all times. They still were like kind of difficult about getting like letting anyone in. And I'm like, just make me like make people wear masks and they do. But I'm like, I don't really get like you can go into a healthcare clinic like with your child now. So like, why can't I come in with my pet? That's strange. So that was kind yeah. of annoying. And Aria fucking hated the vet. <laughs> she. Yeah. I've never heard her hiss that much. It was very stressful on her and on me seeing her mm-hmm. be like that. And when they tried to give her the second shot, they poked her and she literally scrambled off the table and across mm-hmm. the room and under the chair. And they had to like get her out of there. It was very stressful. But oh, now we're back home. Baby. I think they're both under the bed <laughs> chilling. But yeah, that was very eventful. But yeah, it's just been like a busier week. Like I had a dinner last night. So I was out of the house. And then this upcoming weekend, is my brother's birthday and my dad's uh, and obviously Father's Day and there's just like oh and then I drove to Indiana over the weekend so I like didn't have a lot of time to do shit over the weekend so I just feel like my apartment is in disarray my organization is in disarray and I just need to like kind of get a handle on things again yeah we have merch coming out soon people hell yeah stay tuned for that get excited because we've been talking about merch for a while and it's actually fucking happening we found a great platform for it stay tuned we got some really cool pieces coming out also i have two live reaction videos coming for first kill on my personal youtube channel the link for that is in the bio below but yeah my roommate shelby and i reacted to the last two episodes and you can see my live reaction if you liked our Fear Street live reaction that Michaela and I did on our channel you might like this same vibes just on my channel because we're trying to grow that channel because it's literally struggling real bad but but anyways let's talk about gay shit Yes. Yeah, let's discuss. What Should we start out with standout star? Or, stand, or should we start like general vibe? General vibe of the show, what'd you think? Yeah, don't, why don't you go first? I can appreciate what it was doing. I can appreciate elements of it, I think as a whole. Like, will I ever rewatch it? No. But I do like that at its core, it uh, it like follows kind of like a traditional story. Like, I love tropes. I love that like we're destined to kill each other, but you're actually my lover. And like enemies to lovers. Love that we have a sapphic romance at the center of a major TV show, which you don't see very often. Love that we also have uh, people of color main characters as well, because... We don't need all white people, all white straight people on screen. So I can appreciate those elements of the show collectively. I don't know if I loved the execution of it, but I will say that I was like entertained. You know, I was never like sitting there very bored at any times. I did at least, I had fun watching the show, but I would definitely say like if I was giving it like a rating, I'd give it like a C plus. I will just start off by saying that if this were about a dude and a girl, I simply would not like it. (laughs) I have no issue saying that I love this as much as I do because it's two women. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I've heard a lot of response to this show. It's like, it's not original and all this stuff. And to that argument, I'm just like, that is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. No offense. The execution thing that you said, 100% agree. Like, the special effects, they're very gaudy. Like, some of the The dialogue. Oh my god, that is one of my biggest qualms, is the music. That stuff, obviously, yeah, it's hokey. That is what it is, but... It's literally Romeo and Juliet, which Romeo and Juliet has been redone so many fucking times. Like Mm -hmm. Titanic, Twilight, any like enemies to lovers romance that is pulling from Romeo and Juliet. And First Kill is aware that like they're one of their main characters names 
is Juliet. Like, Mm -hmm. they're doing the play Juliet, at Romeo and Juliet, at their high school. Like, they know that they are recreating Romeo and Juliet. West Side Story is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, and that was just nominated for Best Picture. Like, every modern story isn't really that modern. It's a retelling of stories that have proven to do well for centuries now. That whole, like, argument of it's not original, I don't buy into that, and I don't agree with that. Like, I, reboots are everywhere in Hollywood. I just I just don't care. Sorry, it's not, like, an original idea. Are there even any original ideas anymore? What's, no, like, the nuance... In this, the fact that it's two women, enemies to lovers, like, that's why I like this. And that's why it's good. And that's why I want to watch it and wanted to watch it. And that's why I ended up watching it and loving it. We would have never watched it if it was a straight couple at the center of it. (laughs) No, because that's been done before. Like, not even just the fact that that's unoriginal, but like, you can already watch Vampire Diaries. You can already watch Twilight. Like the whole, I love you, but I want to kill you thing. In straight world, it's been done numerous times. The content for that is already there. And the straight, like the straight community has their version of it redone many times. And now it's it's time for like the lesbian community to have their moment. And it's so great as somebody who, you know, I'm 25 now growing up seeing things like this so often. Obviously I, I loved Twilight growing up. I love the Vampire Diaries. I'm not like a huge fan of it, but I've seen it. I think it's awesome. Um, and same with like other freeform shows and like CW shows geared at teens and like young people. I love those shows, but to see myself for the first time really in something like this, it's crazy, you know? And if I would have had a gay Twilight, <laughs> I I even feel weird saying gay Twilight because I feel like Twilight is gay Twilight at this point. (laughs) Twilight is for the gays. (laughs) Like literally it is. And it it is because the gay community has been like grasping at straws. Like we need content. And I think the gay community has kind of like claimed Twilight is like, it's ours. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But this, this truly is gay representation. And for somebody like me who didn't necessarily have stuff like this when I was younger, it's really awesome to see. And I know I said to you that this was very freeform vibes. And it is. I mean, I don't want to project onto a creator or like put words in their mouth, but I do really feel like Victoria Schwab, you know, we've read her her work before. She's an incredibly talented writer and creator. The fact that this is a little hokey and very tropey, but like good tropey. I think she was aware of what she was doing. And I think she... I don't know if she went into the writer's room and was like, I want this to feel like a freeform show from 2012. Mm -hmm. But that's what it seems like. It feels like a show that would have been on freeform. And for some, again, for somebody like me who grew up on freeform and went through puberty during freeform's height to see something like this, it's, it's just really like nostalgic and cool. Mm -hmm. That's just my, my view on the like hokiness of it and kind of the campy tropey. I I do feel like it's intense. I agree because I don't think that there's any way that they could make it unintentional and have it be Mm -hmm. to this extreme, you know, and so consistently throughout hokey. Like it's not just moments. It is like the whole entire show is like that. So I totally agree that I think it had like that was purposeful. And I think you see right now, even in just like fashion and such that very like 90s, 2000s, like Y2K is very big that I think they might have been like, let's make a show that's kind of like reminiscent of that era. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I think like you said that if it was like straight people, it would have been like an absolute hell no. (laughs) Right. I think that's fine to say, you know, it's fine. It's fine to acknowledge that. (laughs) Two, as a creator, it's smart because anything that is like dealing with monsters in the real world and vampires, even if you take it as a creator super seriously, no one else is going to. Twilight has been a joke since the fucking jump to lean into that like hokiness the kind of like goofiness of it i think that's that's a better way to go about it especially because the vampire werewolf which is like all this stuff has been done so many times so to think that you're gonna be the one that like actually touches a nerve and is like making a euphoria level critically acclaimed show out of vampires it's not gonna happen so you might as well lean into the other side of it i think that's my other thing with it i've never really liked vampire stuff like i've never watched vampire Empire Diaries. I love Twilight, but I think just like everyone. <laughs> 
like as a collective, you know, loves that. But even like books, like I don't like vampire books. I read like a lot of like fantasy and stuff, but I prefer like fae if it's vampires and werewolves. It's just not my thing. I've never really liked that. So I think that's the other thing that the show kind of had going against it for me in terms of like really high enjoyment level was it's just also just a premise that is not necessarily my favorite. Like I said, there are elements that I liked, so. Yeah, and it's interesting, like, we, I think we talked about this in our Twilight episode, but vampire lore is always so fun to watch. I mean, I, I agree with you. I don't, I'm not a huge vampire fan. Like I said, I don't watch or read a, a lot of vampire stuff. But I do like seeing how different shows or films or, like, interpretations of vampires, like... Mm-hmm go about the lore of it and the rules of vampire stuff. I feel like the vampires in this are very dissimilar to Twilight vampires. Yeah. And just the whole aspect of, like, legacy vampires I find very interesting. And I, I, Mm -hmm. again, my knowledge of vampire (laughs) content is very limited, so I don't know Mm -hmm. if that's been done before. But it was interesting for me to to watch that unfold. Do you want to do standout star, standout scene? Yeah, Katie, who was your standout star? I have so many. As a lesbian, I also, hold on, let me just backtrack for a second. We have never talked about like gay content, lesbian content on here while I've been out of the closet. We talked about happiest season back before like when I was still in the closet still in a straight relationship and I remember like wanting to say like this is so relatable but I just like wasn't at that place yet when Naya Rivera passed away I called Michaela fucking bawling I was like we Mm -hmm. need to do an episode because she's literally changed my life um but again at that time I wasn't in a place where I could be like she helped me like like reconciling who I am yeah. um, because I wasn't out yet. So this is a monumental moment in Popcorn Chat's history because Yay. we're finally talking about gay content where I can officially say I relate because I am like they are. So progress. Yay. Yay. I didn't even think about that. That's awesome. I did make a mental note that I wanted to bring that up. And if you go back and listen to those episodes, just know that inside me, I'm like holding back the words. Um, (laughs) They're kind of cringy to listen to. I have not listened to the Naya episode. There's no fucking way I could listen to that. But I have gone back to listen to the Happiest Season 1 and I'm just like, oh girlfriend you are so so close but also so far away i'm very happy for you now (laughs) thank you thank you but anyways my standout star so again as a gay woman in all the wlw content that there is out there which there's not much and most of it is fucking horrible but i very rarely am attracted to both of the women in the wlw relationship there's normally one that i'm like she's so fucking hot and the other one i'm just like okay maybe i like relate to her or like see myself in her but i'm not attracted to her (sighs) this is the first content i've seen in a long fucking time where i cannot tell you which one I am more attracted to Calliope and Juliet are two very there's not an unattractive person in this whole show period Mm -hmm. and that's parents included everyone included Mm -hmm. side characters oh that's something again where I just feel like very free form like very Mm -hmm. everybody has to be Abercrombie level (laughs) yeah everyone's got to be hot Right. And I love it. I mm-hmm. I want to look at beautiful people I living it. in rich homes. Like n- none of them are struggling by any mm-hmm. means financially. They all are just living the luxe lives in Savannah, Georgia, fucking mm-hmm. mansions. Yeah. So my standout star, I don't know. I love everyone. I really love, oh, God damn it. I love Eleanor. I'm just going to say that she's my standout star. I really like her character. I think there's a lot of potential for her and Oliver to be great characters if there are subsequent seasons of this show to be kind of like the back and forth morally gray Mm -hmm. who's the villain in this episode or who's the villain of this season I felt like Eleanor was more the villain of this season but maybe that's going to change if there's a season two I felt like that was kind of being set up Mm -hmm. and they both have like dark qualities and redeeming qualities but I did really appreciate Eleanor's character the mean girl we all know that I'm a sucker for the mean girl the pretty Mm -hmm. like slay queen mean girl so she was definitely my vibe what about you well first off when you were talking about how you didn't know like between Calliope and Juliet how you were like you were so attracted to both of them that's exactly how I felt in season two 
a Bridgerton when I was like, I yeah. literally can't tell which one of you I want to be with more. But my standout star is also Eleanor. I love a morally gray bitch. I really, really freaking do. And I loved that right from the get go, from the very first episode, the very first interaction when she's like coming in from a late night out right away. I'm like, is she an ally or is she an adversary? And I couldn't tell. And even yeah. still at the end of the season, I still don't quite know if she is an ally or an adversary. And I feel the same way when Oliver came into the picture as well. I love Oliver. I loved him, especially when he had his little mustache. I was like, oh my mm. God, you're so cute. I'm the most intrigued by them. I think because even though like I loved Calliope and Juliet and I do think that they were great like leading characters in the show, they're not morally gray. I don't see them as like having that like um, sinister edge to either of them. Um, obviously they have differing ways of viewing each other because based on like their backgrounds and who they are but I don't think that makes them like sinister or like truly Eleanor and Oliver have that edge to them they were right. they were my standout stars yeah going off of what you just said I felt like Calliope and Juliet were really really strong at the beginning of the season and then kind of fizzled out towards the end like especially the first episode with we first start in Juliet's perspective mm -hmm. and then we find out at the end of the first episode that Calliope knows that Juliet is a vampire and planning on killing her that suspicion that Calliope has and like not fully trusting Julia I kind of wish they would have leaned into that more and I guess you know that is kind of why they end up breaking up at the end of the season but I think that could have been a little bit more consistent and like the distrust between both of them I would have liked to see more I feel like Julia was just fully like trusting of Calliope the entire time and she does say at one point like I feel like I'm more in this than you I feel like there's a lot of potential in Eleanor and Oliver's characters and I really yeah. hope that if there is a season two that they tap into that because I think it could be a huge strength I would agree and I think Calliope's brothers have a lot of potential too. Love them. I love her whole family. Bitch, yeah. The parents, her, like Calliope's mom and dad, and just that whole family dynamic, so good. Did you have a standout scene? I was like, is this actually a standout or is it just like recency bias? And because I love these two characters and it was in the interrogation room by Dorian. At the end of the season when Oliver and uh, Eleanor are talking in there and he shows up to be like her lawyer and she starts out the conversation thinking she's got like the upper foot, the upper foot. Is that, how, what is upper that? Hand. Upper, upper hand. Upper hand. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the upper hand in the conversation there and thinks that she's kind of like one step ahead of Oliver and then he actually kind of schools her and makes her realize like actually no you in fact do not have the upper hand here and I just think they're both like very evenly matched in terms of like wit that it's interesting to watch those two characters spar and I did like that we got a little bit more of their history because even though we get Oliver like what halfway through the season we don't get a ton of history between him and Eleanor or like even really between him and his parents like we get snippets but we don't really have like a clear picture of what really happened so I liked that we got some more information revealed in that scene and I just thought like the tension in it was really good but I also just loved like back in the first episode a lot of like the Calliope and Juliet moments or just like throughout the season when they were that first love kind of feeling and like those like awkward moments between the two of them I like just appreciate those as a whole they're not necessarily like a standout scene or like specific moment but I just really like watching first love on screen and watching that like bit of awkwardness and the like excitement between the two characters I just think that's really cute um, okay, so my standout scene, I'm gonna have to say this cute little scene when they escape and go stay at the school together and they're like hanging out in their gym clothes. I love a locker room moment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and then when they're like laying in the bed together and like talking about just life and Calliope says, I'll always be a hunter, but I'll never hunt to you. So cute. And one of them says, when we're together, all we have to be is Jules and Cal. And That's here's cute. the thing. Here's the thing about this show. First of all, there's no homophobia in this show, which we fucking lilas. Yep. Because you don't need it. <laughs> We don't fucking no. need it. Thank you. Next. It's very relatable to the queer experience of like parents not necessarily being on board. And like, you can definitely like attribute it to the gay struggle and struggle that some gay people go through. However, these characters, their parents don't care that they're gay. They care that they're a vampire dating a vampire hunter and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Their struggle doesn't come from the fact that they are gay, but 
as someone watching, you could relate to their struggle because you are gay. Love that story. But if you're somebody, say a parent watching this show, you could say, oh wow, they're not pressed because their kids are gay. They're pressed for these other reasons. Mm -hmm. They're protective of their children. They want what's best for their kids. They want them to be safe, happy, and healthy. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy concept, wanting your kids to be happy, I know. But that's what I appreciate about this show. And in that moment, that conversation where they're like, we're together and that's all that matters. And I love you and like everything's hard and family pressures fucking suck. And like the world sucks and everything sucks. But like when we're together, all that matters is that we're together. And that's yeah. such like a relatable thing as a queer person, like a relatable conversation. But again, the fact that they're like having that conversation because they're gay. I just, I really appreciate it. And I might not be articulating it super well, but... No, I get what you're saying. I just, I love a show that is representative without integrating trauma that sometimes comes with being, like, part of a marginalized community. And I think the goal is to not have trauma, obviously, when you're part of a marginalized community, so that trauma doesn't necessarily need to be represented in media, because media is supposed to real life does it to them when you're watching because you can see the struggle that the that the girls and their families are having with them being together but it's not because you can see that and relate to that but it's not as traumatic or like bring up your own memories or like feelings of that in real life is that what you're saying that it's like relatable still without being like dredging up a bunch of like hard shit from your past right yeah it's relatable but it's not like trauma inducing or it's not like it, it's very very hard to articulate um and i don't speak for all like queer people some people might have other opinions about this but just for me personally it's like some of the stuff they're saying it's like damn that's something that has been said to me before because i'm like gay but in this they're gay but that's not part of the problem so like i get to see myself in them without being like they're struggling because they're gay and so am i mm -hmm. i don't know if that if even that explains it well but like that's kind of the best way i can articulate it i hate the intro you do i skipped it every time i hated it i hated the song i liked the graphics but i hated the song it gave me pll vibes mm, it's a, I yeah know. i mean again like am i gonna listen to it in my free time no but it's no. just kind of like a bop that i attribute to the show and i i like open opening credits too because I like that I talked about with Game of Thrones how like I never skip that because it gets me like in the mindset and I feel like with Pretty Little Liars again like I don't care how many times I've seen that intro I don't skip it because it gets me in the mindset for the show when this came up I was like immediately skip because it annoyed me <laughs> so I was like just yeah. get me into the content without the like annoyance of the intro which I love that they have that option on a lot of streaming services I remember when they didn't used to have that and that's so nice that they do now that you can just hit like skip yeah. I mean it's a small thing it's like a very very nitpicky thing. I just know that we've like talked about intros before and I just wanted to throw it out there that this one I was not a fan of. That's valid. I mean, it, it's a little, it's one of those things that's like, it's annoying, but since I love the show so much, I'm just like, you get into it. The zombie song is a bop, <laughs> which is literally what it's called. It's called the zombie song. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of relating to that, the music in this, I think the sound design team really dropped the ball, not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but the music is so overpowering, especially in the first couple episodes. I don't know if I just like got used to it or it got better like throughout the series or the season. Mm -hmm. It was really, really overpowering. And I just, I feel like, is this the strongest acting I've ever seen? No. These performances are very strong, or they're strong enough to not need that really loud background music in every yeah. scene. Whenever she was, like, feeling the thirst coming on, you know? And, like, it's like, <laughs> like Yeah. Horrible. What was that? That was boss. <laughs> It was. Yeah, it, it was too much. It was like the lighting and the the shadowing and then yeah, that intense, like almost like Egyptian style. It kind of reminded me it was of like bizarre. Prince of Egypt like 
intense city vibes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Didn't, didn't appreciate that. I think that was one of my biggest pet peeves. I think I would have liked it maybe more. I think what you said, how it felt like a little Egyptian, which like did now that you say that, like it did give off that vibe where maybe if it was like organs or something like that, I would maybe attribute more with like vampires maybe like I, and it wouldn't have been so overpowering, but I think it was so over dramatic between the lighting, the acting and the music. Like you need to pick like one or two, but to have, all three like very intense in those moments um was just too much (laughs) yeah it reminded me of dune (laughs) you know when they're just like walking in the desert and it's that person like Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, the blood pills. Can we talk about those for a moment? (laughs) Like I said, I have not seen a lot of vampire content because it's not typically my thing. I don't read a lot of vampire stuff. Is that a thing? Like blood pills, do you know for vampires? I couldn't tell you. I I do feel like the way that they approached vampire lore in this was very different than the vampire stuff that I've seen in the past. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing for vampires. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not with the vampires. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's interesting. I think the way that they go about it with this, it's like vampire puberty. Um, and it's a coming of age show in like many aspects. So I think that's just more like the approach that they were taking. And then like mm-hmm. the difference between legacy vampires and main vampires. Mm-hmm. So drastic. And there's almost like a yeah. prejudice. And I also love that they're a matriarchy instead of a patriarchy. I do love that. Again, another element of the show that it's like, I, I appreciated that. Yes. So strong. I love that so much. I think that's why I like Eleanor's character so much is because her desire for power is so fun to watch. And she wants that lifestyle. And there seems to always be that sibling that's just like, I'm content with the way my family is structured. And then everyone else is just like, this fucking is so inhibiting and I just want to be my own fucking person. But then there's always that one sibling that's like, or cousin or whoever that's like absolutely thriving within the, the matriarchy or like the family dynamic that's already established so yeah i do think that's interesting i do feel like the show struggled with pacing and like info delivery i felt like we should have known what happened with oliver a little bit earlier on but i i guess the payoff like when he had that kind of gotcha moment with eleanor at the police station was satisfying but i do feel like we should have kind of known what was going on with that earlier and then like him and this his witch girlfriend hot ass fucking couple love them want more of them but like what are they doing yeah <laughs> like and what's I'm happening like, yeah and i was like how did you two like meet up if, right maybe i missed that if that got explained but i was like how did you two like find each other yeah i was waiting for him to be like and then she found me and like helped me i guess we're supposed to like interpret that and then like why is the family so mad at oliver for killing people when like they all want to kill people I don't Mm -hmm. I the family stuff with the Fairmonts and like Juliet's family parts of it I like and then parts of it I feel like are not as strong as the Burns family Mm -hmm. and like all of their stuff and I do feel kind of like that's why the spotlight shifts a little bit to the Burns family at the end um just because the actors within that family are so strong and then like the dynamic within that and all these like stakes being raised with Theo turning into a vampire so good that's what I'm very excited for if there's a season two I'd love to see the fallout because we saw like a little bit but like more of them having to really come to terms with that yeah but even that like I I was kind of thinking that it could have been stronger in some ways like I don't know how I feel about Juliet being the one to turn him I mean maybe they have like a direction that they're wanting to go with that and i know that that like influenced calliope and juliet's falling out and relationship breakup but i thought they were setting it up with theo's whole pursuit of like info finding about his mom Mm -hmm. i was like what if his mom was like a vampire or something and Mm -hmm. like he's a legacy vampire like he's not only a vampire now but he's like a legacy vampire so Mm -hmm. he like can't die and he just like didn't know it and i don't know how they would have done that but that's kind of what i i just felt like his whole pursuit of like trying to figure out what happened to his mom 
kind of fizzled out too. That's going to come up again in season two, but it's like, you don't know if you're going to get a season two. So. Exactly. Yep. You can't leave all that, that, oh, like you need to leave enough open-ended for possibilities to explore and to keep people interested for season two, but you can't leave like so much out that a one season arc is unsatisfying. Yeah. And I think you've got to like wrap up original storylines and like wrap up unanswered questions. So yeah, I don't necessarily think that this was handled the best way that it could. WLW shows are notorious for having one one season and then nothing, and they always break up at the end of the first season, and then they never get their happy ending because people think that they're going to get a second season, but not enough people watch the first two weeks. Whatever metrics and everything, V.E. Schwab has been on her Instagram. Like, literally, everybody asking me about a season two, it all depends on how well these first two weeks go. So far, First Kill has been in top 10 in like 80 countries or something on Netflix. So things are looking decent. If Outer Banks can have like three, four seasons, you can give First Kill a second season. Right. But yeah, also the actress who plays Juliet is 27. She's literally (gasps) older than the actress who plays Eleanor. Are you for real? That is... How old is Eleanor? She's like... She's our age, I think. That is so wild. You would never guess that. Uh, One other thing with the Fairmonts I want to discuss. What the fuck was up with the dad? (laughs) (laughs) When he ate her mom. That was free form. That was free form. It was. It was giving, like, mid-season finale. (laughs) It was. His wife comes in the room and is just like, Oh no. Uh, That should be grounds for a divorce. Your husband literally just ate your mom. But she was like kind of titillated by it. I felt like she was kind of turned on. She was into it, which I was like, okay, Julia. Well, not Juliet. I can't call her Juliet in here because then that's the daughter's name. Whatever her name was in here. But that truly was so botched. That scene was so bad. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm confused with Mr. Fairmont. Like, I don't really know what's going on with him now that he has this snake inside him. Like, is he mm-hmm. evil? Where do his true loyalties lie? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, when he was running after uh, Julia and Calliope. Yeah, I was like, are you an ally or an adversary? I can't right. tell. I, I like that, like, constantly being on our feet, and I think that helps us fall more in love with Calliope and Juliet and just how you really can't trust anyone and all we have mm-hmm. is each other. Kind of, like, bridging that gap and really solidifying them as lovers that were mm-hmm. originally enemies. Yeah, and I love that moment, when, that turning point where Juliet decides to run with Calliope, especially because she admires her dad so much, but I want him to be a good guy. I really mm-hmm. love Mr. Fairmont, and I love their relationship. I don't know. I find him Me very too. attractive. I also like the fact that he was turned and that then they have that love story of also having like the non-traditional love story because I do think that it really gave Juliet and her mom a chance to connect of being and more for her mom to understand of being like well obviously Juliet is not just going to follow all of our expectations that we set because clearly I didn't so I like that they were able to kind of like humble themselves in that moment of being like remember we shouldn't have been together either and look where we are yeah and I I think she's a a little bit of a hypocrite at times when she's she's like well it's different and all this stuff is like how mm-hmm. really at the end of the day you don't like that your mom is such a bitch towards your person that you're end all be all in love with so why are you being a bitch towards calliope and then their little sex scene the pheromones i know i felt like that was progressive in its own right we don't get a whole lot of like old people owning their sexuality i mean they're not yeah. old but you but know like, what i mean grown-ups on screen you know <laughs> or like not yeah. the central couple like parents you know you never yeah. see that and also i loved her lingerie mm-hmm. that was super cute one last thing about them i do think it's funny that the ma'ams <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) And how she is like the Fairmonts. I bet this was Mr. Fairmont's idea. And it's like, imagine if the Mams find out that the Fairmonts are actually vampires and they're going to be like all up in arms, like conspiracy theorists. The Mams were wild. Again, so timely. Like how many vigilante organizations have been made within the last couple years? 
But yeah, anyways, transitioning to the burns. I love them. I do, I didn't necessarily like when they had like other fighter people coming in the house. Like I didn't like all of those other random kind of people from, what was their organization? Was it the guild? The guild, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really care about any of them coming in. I just really liked when it was like the nuclear family moments of just the five of them together and like training and stuff that I enjoyed them. And like, I think if I had to be a part of one of the two families, I would much rather be a part of their family. Yeah, me too. I think I would definitely rather be a part of the Burns family. They just are such a tight knit ride or die group. I did think that the addition of, like, that other family was a little bit strange. That fucking bitch Tess that ratted out my girl Calliope. Rude. Yeah. I mean, didn't deserve to have your parents killed, but what the fuck? You're just bitter because we don't fuck anymore. And I, here's the thing. Like, you can tell that someone who's within the community, like, wrote and created this because that is such, like, a gay thing. We're just, like, we used to hook up and now we don't anymore. We're just friends. I love the incorporation of that because I don't think it's necessarily something that would be, like, incorporated if a straight person was behind the creation of this. Tess just, like, disappeared. I liked her character. I thought she had potential. uh, So maybe she'll be back if there's a season two. But love the brothers. I didn't feel like there was enough information given about the family. Like, I didn't know that Theo... I thought Theo was adopted when he was trying to find information about his mom. And, you know, we got the information that we needed when we needed it. But I just felt like it was all a lot of information all at once after Mm -hmm. he turned into a vampire. And then the dad is like, his mom, like, the original love of my life, all this stuff. It's like, oh, so that's the biological... Like... I didn't know any of that pretty much the entire show. Yeah. And then to see Mrs. Burns, to see her, like, protect Theo so much Mm -hmm. is such, like, an emotionally powerful thing because she's not biologically his son. Or, Mm -hmm. yeah, her son. His mother. Yeah. So powerful. And I just wish that we kind of would have gotten that sprinkled in a little bit earlier on. And maybe we did, and maybe I just missed it. Maybe on a rewatch, I would pick up on that more. I guess, like, I was kind of disappointed about, like, when things started to shift away from our gay lovers towards the end of the Mm. season. But I do feel like the brother, the actors who played the brothers, and obviously, like, Eleanor, very strong. And then, like, same with the Burns parents. I love, like, their relationship and then the dynamic and, like, all of the stuff that they struggle with at the end of the season. And I loved that scene in the bathroom with the younger brother kissing Eleanor and, like, trying to get that info out of her and then Theo, like, barging in and being like, fuck you, bro, like, you are just trying to hook up. Um, Mm -hmm. And the dramatic irony within that and us knowing that he actually was trying and then Theo getting staked. It's all just good. But again, I feel like if Theo would have been a legacy vampire... And his, like, abilities or whatever would have been, like, dormant or... I don't know how they go about it, right? Mm -hmm. But I just wish he would have been a legacy vampire and that she would have staked him and then he wouldn't die because he's a legacy vampire. Not only what they despise, he's, like, the worst of the worst. Yeah. Like, that's such a great setup for season two. Come on. Of course, I would like to see Calliope and Juliet get their happy ending. I'd love to see more with Theo. And I'd love to see more with Eleanor and Oliver and kind of like resolve some of the things that I feel like not satisfied with in terms of all of those characters. Um, So obviously, like, will I be disappointed if there's not a season two? Like me personally, I don't necessarily care if there's a season two or not. But like, I would hope that for like storytelling purposes and obviously like give gay people happy endings endings that they do get a season two (laughs) to do some more with and like I said like I would definitely tune in for a season two but it wouldn't be like with other shows where I would like riot if they didn't get a season two but I do think there's definitely potential for it like they have a lot they built a good base in this season what do you think about a season two I really do feel like the side characters in this show are really great I love Ben we didn't really talk much about him but um Mm, Juliet's best friend Ben I like his character I just think they're they're really strong and I I would hope that in a season two that they lean into that um and like I said before the potential with Oliver and and Eleanor's characters being like morally great I just think people are really Mm -hmm. 
into those types of characters, or at least we are. And maybe I'm just like in a bubble about it, but I, I'm very intrigued by the two of them. And I would hope that at least like getting a um, conflict going, cause that's like the most important aspect of a show. Drawing from the two of those characters, I think would be really strong. And then yeah, obviously mm-hmm. we need a happy ending for Julia and Calliope. Mm-hmm. There are too many sad endings or tragic endings in queer romance. So getting that acceptance from both sets of parents, I think, is something that they're both striving for and something they both mm-hmm. want. And so that would be a very satisfying thing. I don't know if that's going to come in season two. It seems like something that they really have to work past and might take some time. But I would like to see that for them eventually. We got a sprinkling of it when Juliet, it was revealed that Juliet like saved Calliope from that fucking creeper ass dude from the guild. But, you know, it's still not like fully there. Like you want that full like acceptance and you can get like little sprinkles of it, but it's like, I want the full thing. Gay so shit. next week, <laughs> gay shit. Uh, tune back in next week. We don't know what we're talking about yet, but we will figure it out. Uh, we'll have some episode up next week and then after next week the following week we will be returning to our game of thrones coverage leading up to house of the dragon we are now only like two months out almost to the day so we're getting close here very excited i'm just excited to pick up on season five i haven't watched it yet because i like want to watch it closer to when we're recording i'm very excited to jump in so we'll see what we're doing next week fucking lila lila <laughs> <laughs>